Hello there, I'm Tom, a GP working with CDRC, and in this video, using System 1, I'll show you five ways that CDRC can help you and your team care for patients with chronic kidney disease. Number one, you can find patients with CKD who have the greatest need for intervention, monitoring, or referral. Number two, use our templates and dashboard to guide your long-term condition reviews. Number three, you can run reports and templates to support SGLT2 inhibitor initiation, optimization, and case finding. Number four, calculate the kidney failure risk equation. Don't worry, I hadn't heard of it either. And number five, use our wide range of reports and alerts to help improve the safety and quality of care given to your patients at a population level. So why give CDRC a try? Firstly, CDRC works alongside the tools you already use in practice. They're complementary. Secondly, the tools are built by frontline clinicians and also hazard reviewed by our commissioning support unit so you can have confidence in their safety and accuracy. And thirdly, getting started is easy. Just click the link in the comments for a quick start guide. So you might be thinking, why bother investing time and energy into CKD? Well, we feel that they are an underserved population, often neglected during long-term condition reviews. In reality, there's a really high crossover in these patients with diabetes, hypertension, heart failure, and, hi and hyperlipidemia. So despite the absence of quaff incentives in relation to CKD, thinking in terms of CKD can help to prioritize patients at the highest risk of cardiovascular disease. In order to use the dashboard, you'll just need to email TPP directly to request the visualization feature to be enabled at your practice. Firstly, type visualization into the search bar, click launch visualization, and then open the C CDRC CKD dashboard. The dashboard gives you a real-time overview of CKD prevalence within your population. And the figures in red highlight patients included within your QAF register. Sections include case finding and coding issues, monitoring, blood pressure control, with a reminder of the various targets for those of you like me who haven't quite managed to commit these to memory yet, medication treatment, and patients who are under secondary care. The next sections in blue help you find groups of patients in whom some kind of intervention is required. You can find patients who need coding added, repeat use and ease, or ACR testing to confirm a previously missed CKD diagnosis, the next section helps you to improve coding accuracy. Now, I know what you're thinking, that looks super complicated, and I can never quite remember my G3BA2s from my G3A A3s. I get it. I suspect many of us, me included, still operate within the traditional CKD 3 to 5 model, which is totally understandable given the competing priorities and pressures facing primary care. But if and when you as a practice felt that it was the right time to upgrade to the current classification system, these bite-sized reports are a pretty good place to start, and they should remove some of the headache from what would otherwise be a daunting task. The final section in blue breaks down work to do into bite-sized chunks to help prioritize and assign the work in your team with a clear outcome, such as measure blood pressure, check medication concordance, along with a reasonable list size to work through. Having the work broken down into smaller chunks should help you to share the load around your team. For example, blood pressure and use and ease to a healthcare assistant and the medication concordance work to your in-house or PCN pharmacy team. Furthermore, a range of reports exist to help optimize management, including blood pressure control, lipid lowering therapy, RAS drugs, SGLT2 inhibitors, and a report to find patients in whom calculating the KFRE, that's the kidney failure risk equation, might be required. Finally, the reports at the bottom prioritize all patients with CKD into three priority groups, combining factors such as CKD stage, outstanding monitoring, and the need for any meds optimization. First, open the CDRC template master by the search bar, and you can add a button to the toolbar for quick access. Then click on CKD, and you'll need a patient record open to do this. The template walks you through each aspect of management and optimization, so it'll be most useful during your long-term condition reviews, plus any safety or quality improvement work you're able to do. The buttons on the left open templates relevant to each area of management, and in the middle, you've got information and prompts specific to this patient to help support shared decision-making. The templates include coding support, lifestyle recording, blood pressure control, lipid lowering therapy, and more. The referral tab shows a summary of creatinine, GFR, 
and ACR results, along with any recorded KFRE value and a reminder of referral criteria. Next up is the optimization dashboard. Open the launch patient visualization window by the search bar, then find CKD optimization. This dashboard shows a summary of comorbidities, various targets, and historical renal function. Towards the bottom are considerations for further management. These prompts give you, give you a tailored list of management options to consider. For example, in this patient, we can tell that the lipid target isn't achieved yet, and that we could consider the need for SGLT2 inhibitor therapy. The AKI risk score is also calculated. You can also open the lipid optimization visualization here, but we'll cover that in another video. So, I hope I'm not the only one who is having to make the mental shift from SGLT2 inhibitors solely living in my diabetes box to recognising the other indications for their use, namely in CKD and heart failure. It also feels to me at least that the dosing, indications and safety issues around prescribing them can feel complicated. So, let's take a look through some of the tools which might help here. First, open the CDRC template master and then CKD. You can find the SGLT2 inhibitor template on the left. The area to the right shows information pulled from the record which can help to inform your decision making around safe prescribing. For example, here it's telling us that this patient has proteinuric CKD, so might benefit from SGLT2 inhibitor therapy, but also lets us know that we don't yet have a record of foot examination. On the left is information about risks and side effects. The next tab gives a summary of dosing and indications in relation to GFR and liver impairment. Just going back to the first tab, the safety checklist talks you through key questions, again pulling information from the record to inform those questions, and then opens a questionnaire allowing you to record key safety points and the shared decision making aspects of the discussion. You can also send out patient information leaflets too. The final tab relates to exception reporting. Now, for those of you who are interested in finding patients who are likely to be eligible for SGLT2 inhibitor therapy, whether that's for diabetes, CKD, or heart failure, we'll cover that now. If that doesn't quite float your boat, just skip to the next section. So, to find the reports, open the clinical reporting window at the top left of the screen. Open DCS, then CDRC quality, and then click on cardiovascular. Just check that the reports are organized by name. There are heaps of safety and quality searches relating to many aspects of cardiovascular disease, but for now, just scroll down to the SGLT2 inhibitor section. There's a whole range of reports which can help to find groups of patients who are likely to be eligible for SGLT2 inhibitor therapy. Now, you might be thinking, there are loads of reports here, do we really need all of them? The reports are just organised into little hierarchies and contain increasing amounts of inclusions and exclusions to help improve the accuracy of the list of patients, basically to help you spend the minimum time possible finding the right patients. As a quick example, let's look at SGLT2 inhibitor case finding where diabetes is the main indication. The highest level contains the most patients, then as we move down the groups, the list size reduces as more exclusions are applied. The top level is everyone in whom SGLT2 inhibitors are likely to be indicated and who are not already prescribed one. Moving down, we have that same group, but this time we're excluding patients where an adverse drug reaction to SGLT2 inhibitors has, has been recorded. Moving down further, that same group as above, but this time excluding patients who have declined SGLT2 inhibitors within the last 12 months. And finally, that same cohort as above, but this time excluding patients where SGLT2 inhibitors were coded as being unsuitable. And just for completeness, the excluded groups are included within the reports here, just for reference. The final report in each series should therefore contain the leanest and most accurate list of patients. Scrolling down further shows case finding reports for CKD and heart failure and also a series of composite reports which find patients with multiple indications for SGLT2 inhibitors. Now, if you've never heard of the kidney failure risk equation, you're in good company. In short, the KFRE is an internationally validated tool which predicts the two and five year probability of end stage kidney disease in patients with CKD 3A to 5 and it's recommended by NICE. Basically, NICE suggests that a five-year risk greater than 5% is a strong indicator 
for referral to the renal team. The template has a built-in calculator to estimate the KFRE, so handy for example during your long-term condition reviews. Also, as mentioned earlier, the population dashboard also contains a report which identifies patients with high-risk CKD who don't yet have a KFRE recorded. There's a whole range of safety, quality and case-finding reports to help your team prioritise the care delivered to your patients. They're easily found via clinical reporting, DCS, CDRC quality and then clicking on the renal section. The reports are organised into different groups, from prevention, for example, finding high-risk patients on NSAIDs, to case finding, to coding accuracy and management considerations. Finally, safety alerts and pop-ups can be turned on, which can help display warnings when filing results, such as user needs or ACRs. For example, the pop-ups can tell us to consider a new CKD diagnosis or consider regrading your diagnosis or a need for user needs or repeat ACRs. There's also an AKI warning system which triggers when certain things happen in the record that would suggest a risk of AKI. If you found this video useful, please go to the CDRC website which has got loads of other resources and tools available for you to browse through. For information on how to access CDRC, just follow the link in the comments. That's it, thank you so much for watching. Thank you.